Good morning and welcome to El Cafecito. Uh, my name is Aaron Espinoza. I'm an inclusion engagement leader with the Multicultural and Student Activities Programs. Today with us, we have Dr. Taylor, uh, Associate Professor with the Mathematics Department. How are you doing this morning? Doing fine. It's Friday, so can't complain too much. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Yeah, it's been a week, so we're, we're excited to be Friday. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So what time does your alarm, alarm go off in the morning? Uh, it's usually set for 730, um, but I have young kids. And so it's kind of a roll. It's a roll of the dice as to whether I get to the alarm before, before someone wakes me up. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, 730 if everything goes according to plan. Awesome. I, I, I like that. Um, what is your yeah. go-to video or GIF for a laugh? Um, yeah, so I don't know if this is like how long it is your, it's been the go-to really, but I really love those Lubalin videos. I don't know if you've seen these floating around the internet, um, but they're hilarious. This, this musical artist, his name is Lubalin, has these like internet drama videos. Um, and a new one just came out yesterday, but there's one about a Facebook exchange where someone steals someone's bro broccoli casserole recipe or whatever. It's hilarious. <laughs> I like that. Um, where is your favorite place to get takeout or delivery from? Ooh, so that's a little tricky. Uh, I would probably go PV Deli um, over off of Knickerbocker. Um, I'm a sucker for a good sandwich and their sandwiches are awesome. But I would also, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Cane's. I love Raising Cane's yeah, chicken. Oh, that's what I, <laughs> I can 100% I can agree with you on that. Um, yeah. What's your favorite quote from a movie? Ooh, I will go with um, what's the most you ever lost on a coin toss from No Country for Old Men. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with that movie, but that scene is real like it's this really weird scene where essentially the main character is like threatening this random store yeah. clerk's life, you know, and like it feels very fraught. Um, but also like I feel like we make these huge decisions that are sort of 50 50 all the time, you know what I mean? So like it's a sort of, um, you know, a deeper question. Like whenever I was watching the movie, I was sort of like, oh, you know, like struck by it. I really like that movie. And, you know, I've never like looked at it with the subtext and context like that, but I'm gonna have to rewatch it now and kind of look at it again. It was one of my favorite movies too, but just for like the sheer plot of it, I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a great story. But like that scene, he's just like random store clerk on the road and they get in this very intense conversation. Like, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Yeah. Um, what is the most interesting thing you have near you right now? The most interesting thing I have near me. So this is a 3D printed object uh -huh. and it's an, a mathematical object called a Klein bottle. Uh -huh. So if you are familiar with a Mobius strip in math, uh -huh. it's like something, it's like a band of paper with one twist, you know, uh -huh. such that it only has one side. Like if you trace your finger, it's only got like one edge. Uh -huh. And this is like the 3D equivalent of that. Like this has no inside and no outside the way it's like sort of shaped. The inside is the outside and vice versa. Uh -huh. um, so one of my buddies from grad school printed this and mailed it to me. So I'd probably say this anytime a student's in my oh, office, cool. they're always, they pick this up. They're like, what's this thing? Yeah. See, I've never, I've kind of like, you know, and I'm not going to say I'm, you know, proficient in any like mathematical essence anyway but like i've had like so, like a very minute like look at a mobius strip and i'm just like i couldn't wrap my head around it kind of thing but it, those things are really cool that's really cool yeah it's interesting stuff it's interesting stuff <clears throat> um what do you work towards in your free time what do i work towards in my free time uh recently uh fixing up the house a little bit you know i think a lot of people during the pandemic were spending all this time in our in our houses our apartments whatever and so me and my wife have been like, maybe we should, uh, you know, like put in a backsplash or maybe we need a like new rug in the hall, like that kind of stuff. Um, but then also maybe playing guitar. I've been playing guitar more in the pandemic too. And I'm not good, you know, but like. Hey, practice I, is perfect. I, that's right. It's, you know, it's like a lifelong skill where, you know, consistency is more than, than, more, more than anything else. Oh yeah. Um, what app on your phone would you recommend college students get like right now immediately? Well, um, 
So for this one, I'd, I don't necessarily have this particular app on my phone, uh -huh. but I think that it's a good one. So a lot of people, you know, like we're, we're, we're looking at our screens all the time. Uh -huh. um, so I would recommend uh, a mindfulness app. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you're familiar with a, like app like Headspace, or there's one I think on Apple that's literally called the mindfulness app. Uh -huh. um, but it's sort of like a soft introduction to meditation. And I think people think of meditation as like this woo woo Buddhist thing, yeah. you know, um, but I think that really, you know, just taking a few minutes to like calm your thought process can really do a lot for like centering yourself mm -hmm. and like helping you retain material. So like, especially for a student taking five minutes to just like calm the inner dialogue can really go a long way. Um, so I would say a mindfulness app, I'll say headspace, I guess, but there are a bunch out there. I like that. And I'm gonna have to agree with you on that. You know, like I've really come to understand that like, you know, cramming is just not the way to go. But like, you know, I, I've noticed that as I study, if I start to look too far forward ahead or try to go too fast kind of thing, I will essentially give myself anxiety trying to study and then I get nothing done. And I have to remind myself, calm yourself down, focus and work, you know, towards the goal kind of thing. And that's right. What's in front of you. And that's it. We just what's yeah. in front of you for now. Exactly. Um, what is the silliest thing you are passionate about? Well, so I guess you could argue whether this is silly or not, but I'm very passionate about Dolly Parton. So she's having a real, I love that. She's having a real moment in the sun right now. Like uh -huh. she's everywhere and whatever, but I'm originally from East Tennessee and like I grew up 40 minutes from where she grew up. So like okay. locally, she's been a huge deal for a long time. And now she's getting all this national spot. Like I have a picture of Dolly Parton on my office door. <laughs> Um, so you might think that's silly. So I, but I think that's a reasonable answer. She does a ton of good. Like, she's great. I love Dolly. I love that. You know, as far, you know, as far as silliness goes, I, I'm right there with you. I don't think it's silly at all. I can admire Dolly Parton. Yeah. She's doing some good work out there. Would you rather know the history of every object you've ever touched or be able to talk to animals? Ooh. Tough one. <laughs> this one is tricky. So is this something you can turn on and off or is it something that's always on? Um, I think it'd be something that you could turn on and off, you know, kind of like when you wanted to. I feel like the animals thing would be con constant, but the touching thing would be like, you know, mm, do I want to know kind of thing? Yeah, I'll go with talk to animals. I'm, a, I'm an animal lover. And even though I don't see as many, even though I don't see as many animals in my everyday life as I maybe would like, you know, don't get as much outdoor time as I should. I still think it'd be really interesting. Of course, probably after like a year, you'd be like, oh my gosh, these animals. <laughs> <No. You know? laughs> oh, uh, did you love working from home or would you rather be in an office or is there a balance of both that you like the best, of, you know, the best of both worlds kind of thing? I like the flexibility of working from home, but oh, yeah. I'm much more productive in the office. Oh yeah. So like this has been true uh, since I was in graduate school. Like I am just not as productive at home. Like I can work from home, like whatever, that's fine. But I, it takes me longer to get the same amount of work done if I'm at home versus if I'm, if I'm in my office. And I know that's not true for everyone. And some of that might also have to do with the, with the fact that I have two little kids at home. Yeah. So like it's harder to like get in a, get in a groove, but I prefer working in the office, but I do think there is value in, flexibility, you know, in terms of like being able to be at home or on campus. And as professors, there's a lot of work you can do at home, like grading and like whatever. Um, so I do think that the right answer is some sometimes a balance, but I do find that I'm personally more productive in my office. For sure. And I think within the last year, you know, we learned to manage distractions and like be disciplined like a lot more than we would have otherwise, you know? Yeah, sure. Um, would you rather have all traffic lights you approach be green or never have to stand in a line again? I'm definitely going to go with no lines. Yeah. <laughs> Traffic lights, that's fine, but that's only when you're driving, you know, like lines, like grocery store, amusement park, like registering for things like, you know, a new game or gaming console or phone or anything like that, you know, like skip all those lines. I'm ordering food. Yeah. Throw the lines away. Throw the lines away I'd be a happy man. I can, you know, I can really vibe with that. You know, you get a lot of things done if there are no lines. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's a lot of time back. Yeah. If you were famous and had a pseudonym, what would your alias be? I have known the answer to this question since I was about 14 years old. Yeah. So I share it exclusively with 
El Capacito, which is okay. my alias would be Lee McIlvain. Lee McIlvain. That's right. That's right. And so I'm not. I'm not going to explain the justification because that's the reason. It's sort of like you know security questions types <laughs> answers. Like, oh, well, where did where did this part come from? Where yeah. did this part come? From? But yeah, if I was ever, for example, like an author writing under a pen name or something, mm -hmm. Lee McIlvain. That's that's me. I'm gonna have to look out for it now. You publish any books, I'm gonna be like, hey, I know that name kind of thing. Yeah, like, oh. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Um, if you could choose one element to control, what element would you choose? So I've also thought about this one because I'm a big Avatar, The okay. Last Airbender. <laughs> I mean, not the movie, of course, but like oh, the animated, no. the animated series. Uh, and I think that I would have to go with Earth because oh. it seems it seems the most flexible. You know, like. You can do all sorts of things with it that, I mean, like you could offer support or you could like attack someone or like smother a fire or like block something. I mean, like, I don't know. Earth seems the most flexible, even though it's not flashy in that series. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go with Earth. See, I'm going to, I'm going to, if it were me, I think I'd be, a, you know, kind of in a, a tie between fire and water. I don't know what would be more useful in that situation, but you know. Yeah, I don't know. Depends. Yeah, uh, it, all depends. it all depends on the situation. Uh, what is the process for making your favorite dish? Ooh, I I don't know if I would just call this strictly my favorite, but one that I've been making a lot because it has a really high ratio of like how fast it comes together to how delicious it is, uh -huh. uh, is carbonara, which is an Italian dish that has a tempered egg sauce. Okay. So like, eggs go into the sauce. Um, so the process is you cook some noodles, you fry up some bacon in like small pieces. Okay. Then you throw some garlic in with the bacon when it gets crispy, and then you take it off the heat. And then you put the noodles in with the bacon, and then you put a little bit of the pasta water in to like cool it off and like get it some liquid. And then the real, the magic in the dish though is like grated Parmesan or Romano cheese with two egg yolks and two whole eggs. So it's this cheese egg mixture and that you put in these hot, this hot dish off heat and then you like stir it around. And so what happens is the eggs temper, meaning that they like barely set and like they're ready to eat, but they don't actually cook like a scrambled egg. Uh -huh. End up with this really cr creamy, rich, delicious really good. noodles. Um, yeah, it's, it's cooks in like 20 minutes and it's, crazy delicious of course because you've got like all these amazing things like bacon you know like whatever i like that you know anything remotely close to that and it's gonna be this you know garbage food idea that i've had that comes close to that was i throw an egg on occasion into my ramen noodles from time to time you know there you go there you go <laughs> throw an egg in that makes it better right oh yeah um how did college or how did going to college shape you as a person Oh, it's shaped me in a lot of ways. Um, so I went to college about three hours from where I grew up. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's far enough away from your parents to, you know, not have them checking in on you all the time, but close enough that if you're feeling homesick, you could go for a weekend and it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of things about college that sort of shaped me up. I mean, like for one, I didn't always know I wanted to do math, right? And so like, while I was in college, like many people, I changed my major a bunch of times and like eventually landed on math. And that of course has completely changed the trajectory of my life, like graduate school and like mm -hmm. now I'm a job working as a math professor, but also just like my relationships and friendships, you know, that, that you make in college, a lot of those friends can stick with you, you know, depending on, um, depending on how much you value them. And like, I'm still very close friends with several guys, like former roommates in college, mm -hmm. um, you know, my first serious girlfriend was in college, like a lot of these like big life milestones not related to professionalism happened in the college setting for me, at least. So like, yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of my adult life has been shaped by the friendships and experiences and choices that I made when I was a college student. I like that a lot. You know, and I think, you know, kind of like you were saying those life events and then, uh, you know, that professionalism, it's weird how they kind of work in tandem with how you, you end up shaping up because you I mean, I look at myself from maybe three or four years ago, I'm, I'm nothing what, you know, what I am now. And I still have so much more to grow, you know? Yeah. And go, like going back to that, how much you ever lose on a coin flip, you know, yeah. like, there's this opportunity cost to every decision that we make. And so like I chose math and I could have chose all these other things. And like, 
what's the sort of sistership of my life that I would have been on, you yeah. know, if, if I hadn't chose this and chose something else. It's food for thought, crazy to think about, man. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Um, what strategies do you use to make big decisions? Speaking of that, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. So how do you how do you optimize your coins? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll just list one. I mean, like, obviously, it's a really big decision. You want to do a lot of things. Um, but I, well, maybe I'll say two things. Uh -huh. One, I talk to people in my life whose opinions I respect. So like my brother, almost anytime I'm making a big decision, I talk to my brother about it. We're very like-minded and he approaches things the same way I do. So like as a sounding board, I talk to him. I talk to like my mom, you know, like see how she is feeling about it. Cause you know, your mom has usually got your, got your back, right? She's got your best interest at heart. And so, you know, I, so I'll talk to family or close friends, but then I'm also a big believer of pros and cons lists too. Something about the physical act of writing. I don't mean typing something about the physical act of writing really helps you organize like your true emotions about a topic. So like when you're writing those pros and cons and as you're sort of like sifting through the process in your mind, I'm a big believer in the pros and cons list as well. See, I can agree with that. And in and, and the way that of pros and cons, like what's going to be the cause and effect kind of thing for me. And, you know, yeah. I'm like, and granted, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily pessimistic, but I look at like worst case scenario in every situation. So I'm like, what's going to happen if I do this kind of thing? So sure. yeah, yeah what commercial jingle always gets stuck in your head all the time yeah, okay so there are a couple of these but uh -huh. what immediately popped into my head is a jingle that many people who are watching this may not have ever heard in their life uh -huh. there used to be a game it's i guess you could call it a board game it's a tabletop game called crossfire are you familiar uh -huh. with the game crossfire i'm not actually okay so it's essentially a game where there's like a circular board and there's a bunch of like little ball bearings, like metal balls, and you load them up into like a fixed little shooter that has like a, uh, you know, a little ramp where you shoot these ball bearings, like when you're like constantly loading them in and you and another player are both shooting. Oh at my gosh. What looks like a little ninja star. And so you're trying to like shoot this little ninja star across the board and uh -huh. the first person to get it to fall off the ledge wins the game. So in like the 80s or 90s, this was like a big tabletop game. And uh -huh. the jingle for that is always getting stuck in my head. <laughs> Which I'll give you a little snippet of. It goes like, crossfire, you'll get caught in the crossfire, crossfire. I and love that. I have no idea why, but that jingle has so much staying power in my mind. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's Saturday morning cartoons. I don't know, man. It's amazing. I'm, I'm going to give it a 12 out of 10 just based on your description alone. That's amazing. I want to, I'm going to go look it up now. Kind you of should. Thing. It's classic. It's a classic, classic game in the 90s, I guess. What life hacks have you found to be particularly effective? I'm going to go with cleaning five minutes before bed and when you wake up in the morning. Uh -huh. I think people underestimate a lot of things, but they underestimate the value of having a decluttered living space, mm -hmm. right? It's so much easier to think and operate and be not stressed out when things are at least moderately picked up. Mm -hmm. And also underestimate the how big a difference five minutes can make. Like five minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but if you do five minutes before you go to bed and five minutes in the morning, it's going to be a lot better than it was. I mean, like just set like a timer, like you know, me and my wife are in this habit of like, essentially, you know, every, before bed, we'll spend a couple minutes just, you know, surface cleaning, putting away dishes, starting the dishwasher, this kind of thing. And like unloading the dishwasher in the morning, whatever, all that kind of stuff really greases the wheels of your whole day, you know? So I would get, I would say five minutes before bed. And when you wake up, like if you can just dedicate that 10 minutes, everything in your life is less stressful. I feel like. Yeah, and I like I like the fact that you included the mental health aspect. You know, like I know for me, like if I'm feeling anxious or something, and I gotta clean something. I know cleaning it helps me feel a little better when I'm trying to organize the mess that is my life. You know? Yeah, like it's like we get this small amount of control. I can fix this one thing, right? right? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. What would you tweak about the Olymp What would you tweak uh, about the Olympics that would make the events more enjoyable? I think that what they should do is allow one random Joe to participate. Because yeah. 
athletes on screen, you don't appreciate how much better they are than the average person yeah. because they all are amazing, right? Like even the person who finishes sixth is like orders of magnitude better than everyone else. So what they should do is just like have a one random person in the stands come down and do the event, you know, so that you can see, oh, they got 32 feet. Okay, well, we have no idea what that means. Oh, well, you know, Chris from the stands got four feet. So we can see, <laughs> we can see how much better these guys are than, than the regular people, you know, out, out in the world. I like that, you know, kind of have that baseline. You know, I would sure watch yeah. and be like, you know, where are my inadequacies compared to like this, you know, yeah. phenomenal athlete you know yeah because they're all great and so what we need is a baseline we need yeah. a, we need an average human out there to sort of compare these amazing athletes to oh yeah i agree um what's the story behind how you met your best friend oh so i guess that depends on who we're qualifying as my best friend um i'll i'll exclude my wife from the equation even though that's actually probably the correct mm -hmm. answer but I feel like if that was the intended answer, it would have been like, how did you meet your significant other? So oh. I'll not include her. Um, and I'll go with my best friend, certainly in San Angelo, is another math professor, uh, Dennis Hall, Dr. Dennis Hall. Okay. And we met in graduate school at LSU. So I don't know if you can see the LSU picture yeah. <laughs> all over here. Um, but yeah, we met in Baton Rouge. We started graduate school at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we ended up going, taking a lot of the same courses together hanging out on weekends, going tailgating football games together. We had the same academic advisor. We graduated the same semester. So we had this very similar timeline. And then now, two years after I came to Angelo State, the math department hired him at Angelo State. And so now we work together. Um, so it's this very kind of, unusual, like it's not very common for people yeah. to grad school to end up working with you. Um, so yeah, now like we hang out all the time, you know, like they're, he, he and his wife are mine and my wife's best friends in town by a mile. Like we get together for Wednesday dinners, you know, mm -hmm. hang out all the time. Um, so yeah, we met in grad school because we sort of studied the same math and took a lot of the same stuff. And we just sort of like naturally, naturally gravitated towards each other, I guess. That's amazing. And like you said, that's not common, you know, that's something really, you know, rare. I yeah, that. yeah. It's I feel really lucky to have a good friend in the department because it's uncommon that you have an old friend in your work environment you know like i've been working at asu for six years but i've known dennis for 12 you know like that's amazing yeah um what do you think the current gen or how do you how in what ways is the current generation different from your generation i think that the biggest difference between the current generation and my generation is that is the sort of public perception of our generation I don't think our generations are all that different, but I feel like the public perception is always trying to make these hard demarcations, you know, like uh, oh, Gen X, Gen Z, millennials, you know, like whatever. And they were like, oh, well, oh, let's compare and contrast. I feel like a, a, our generations are not so dissimilar, mm -hmm. except that like the sort of public perception and like the sort of what people say about the generation is sort of influencing our generations in, in different ways, right? Um, so I think that that is the biggest perception because the media really likes to talk about generational divides. And I think that is affecting how the generations view themselves and like how we're interacting with each other and like all that kind of stuff. Um, but I also think that a big difference is my generation is sort of a unique generation when it comes to tech. Mm -hmm. because I spent my young childhood when like big tech was not a big deal. Like it was a big deal that we had a personal computer in our house when I was growing up, you know, and now I feel like that people expect elementary kids to know how to use a laptop. Yeah. You know? like, and so I think that growing up with technology, you had to sort of understand the mechanics of technology in a different way. And so I think that a lot of people view the current generation as like a super tech savvy generation, oh. but I like really they're just like super software users not like a behind the scenes understanding of tech not that everyone in my generation does either i'm not saying that at yeah, all i know but i think our relationships with technology are also a little different because of sort of like how we came up with them you know like i bet you grew up like smartphones and laptops that's the rule of thumb you know like yeah. as opposed to like yeah when we had like a big behemoth computer in the downstairs that made uh -huh. dial-up noises to connect to the internet uh -huh. 
maybe you've never even heard in your life, you know, like, yeah, this is, I feel like the, the tech difference is a big one too. So in regards to technology, I was on the hind end of that, you know, right as they were kind of pushing out the, you know, the family computer thing uh, yeah. out the window. And it's crazy. Have you heard of the phenomenon where like, you know, people feel like these large amounts of time have uh, like kind of elapsed and really it's just the advancement of technology going really quickly, you know? Yeah, it may been a right. few year. It may have been two years, but, you know, it feels like five from based on like what what all has like come, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, especially because like computer graphics, we mm -hmm. see graphics so ubiquitously now they're everywhere, like commercials, movies, games, uh -huh. like what we're doing right now, you know, and like the internet speeds have sped up so much, like what we're doing right now would have been impossible almost 20 years ago, especially if you didn't have like specialized equipment. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's yeah. I, that is an interesting phenomenon how like tech is affecting our perception of time, you know? Yeah. Um, next question. What is the closest thing to magic? I'll go with a math answer here uh -huh. uh, and say compound interest. So oh. I, I used to teach. Uh, <laughs> so there's a famous quote that's false. I think falsely attributed to Albert Einstein, which is that like compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe. Uh -huh. Um, and I used to teach um, a personal finance for freshman class as a signature course here at ASU. Um, and so I, I believe in financial literacy, and I think a lot of students get sort of like overwhelmed when it comes to understanding finances, or a lot of people get overwhelmed when it comes to understanding finances, but like really time matters so much for compound interest and like, you know, the rich get rich because of compound interest. And I think more people understood exactly how interest rates work and how compound interest specifically works. I think a lot of people could be doing you know, themselves a financial favor in terms of like, you know, if you, if you're going from, you know, barely enough money to enough money, that's magic, you know, mm -hmm. magic for your life, you know? So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with compound interest. I like that. I like that. What is the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? Oh, this week, the most interesting thing I've read, read or seen this week, I guess um, for the current climate, the fact that the new $1.9 trillion stimulus bill just got signed into law. So like a bunch of stuff's about to be happening with respect to that. So that's interesting. I mean, regardless of your political stances, that's certainly interesting that it's a reality now, you know? Oh yeah, I agree with you. Um, what's your favorite way to waste time? My favorite way to waste time recently is I finally broke down and bought a Nintendo Switch. Uh, Love it. Love it. So I've been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild. I know I'm late to the party, but like I'm an old school Zelda guy. Like Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo is one of my all time favorite RPGs. So lately I've been wasting a lot of time exploring Breath of the Wild. See, I love that. I'm 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 not so much of a Zelda fan as much as I am a Pokemon fan, but you know, I I, I, can, I can vibe with that. I like that. You excited about that new Pokemon release that's very open world that's coming out? I am excited for that one. I probably wouldn't say the the remake i wasn't expecting that for the remake which my my initial one was probably ruby and sapphire and then the next one but i mean i, I have to give it a shot you know let it let it run its course kind of thing sure sure um what did you do on your last vacation went to the beach so we haven't been doing a lot of vacationing recently um <laughs> My last vacation was to the beach and it was amazing. I love going to the beach. Like I like exploratory vacations, uh -huh. but the beach is really just like a, not, you know, I'm not doing anything at the beach, you know, like swimming and laying around and drinking margaritas and reading books. <laughs> there you go. That sounds like paradise to me. Yeah. Um, who in, in your life brings you the most joy? Oh, I'll go with a catch all answer and say my family, you know, like, the pandemic has been hard for a lot of reasons. And don't get me wrong. We all have our moments cooped up in that house together. Yeah. So, you know, like when you've got little kids, they're nutty and like say <laughs> up and do crazy stuff. And like, I like, I, I'm a person who appreciates absurdity and chaos. Uh -huh. uh, and when you have little kids, you have to embrace absurdity and chaos. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I very much enjoy seeing their little minds interacting with the world in unpredictable ways. You know? It must be amazing, you know, to have that, you know, and you maintain that childlike wonder too, you know, when you have th those kind of kids around. Yeah, sort of forces you to think, think about things from a different perspective when they're asking you very weird, silly questions, you know. Oh, for sure. 
um, what skill would you like to master? Oh, um, either I would love to master playing the guitar, right? Again, I'm not, not very good, <laughs> but I like to play. Um, and, or I would say um, mastering languages, right? I mean, I think that language is really important and communication is incredibly important. Um, I am not bilingual, uh, but I would love to be just like everyone on earth. You know, it's easy to say that. It's another thing to put in the work to make it happen. Um, but yeah, I'll, I would either say the guitar or, or language. That's cool. I like that. I, I have to agree with you on the language one. That'd be pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Uh, what trait defines your style of instruction? Oh, I guess I would say, I hope what the answer is, is enthusiasm. Yeah. Uh, my favorite professors and teachers in my life were always high energy, enthusiastic people, you know, and especially teaching math, which can be very dry. For some <laughs> dry. Students. Um, I, I hope that what students would say about my teaching style is that if nothing else, I'm enthusiastic about it. You know, like I like this stuff. I think it's interesting. Um, and I try to convey that when I'm, when I'm teaching. I like that. I'll have to agree with you. You know, a lot of my favorite professors were always the people that I could, you know, they, maybe not always enthusiastic, but I could engage with them kind of thing and, you know, yeah, sure. have those discussions with them. I really like that a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, how different was your life one year ago? Oh, wildly different, you yeah. know, like the kids are in daycare and like we're going and, you know, going out to restaurants, hanging out with friends, yeah. all this stuff. And now, like, I feel like I haven't done any of that in 10 years is what it feels like, you oh, know, yeah. you know. And it's crazy to think, you know, a year ago, I wouldn't have think we were, would be in the position we are now. And it's wild. Yeah. I mean, like everyone's like, oh, in like two months, we'll yeah. be back to normal. I remember like betting with my friends, not like actual money, but just like, so when do you think, when do you think we're getting back to normal? And answers are like July, September. Oh, you think it'll be that long? You know, like now here we are full year later. It's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. If you find, if you found out you were a direct descendant of a king or queen, would you go find them and uh, claim your throne or keep your life as it is now? No way. Fame, fame and like being in the public eye, I think is way, way overrated. Like I would, there's no way I would do that. Or like, you know, this is like people who want to be movie stars. I would never want to be a movie star. Like, I don't want that level of invasiveness in my life. I don't want uh, everything I'm doing. Like, oh, Dr. Taylor bought Fuji apples at the grocery store today. <laughs> Stay off my apples. Like, I don't want none of that. I would definitely not claim the throne. See, and it's crazy, too, you know, with the 21st century, you know, it's, you know, privacy is expected, but in a wild way, privacy is sort of dead because, you know, you can have things pulled out, you know, on a minute's notice, you know, and it's wild, you know, how that kind of works. Yeah, especially if you're a heavy social media user. I mean, like, I'm not, but, like, if you're heavy on social media, there is no such thing as privacy, basically. Yeah. Um. What fad or trend do you hope comes back? I'm going to go with one that I did. There's, this is a fad that wasn't even really for my time, but it had like a little resurgence among my, like in my lo very local area, which mm -hmm. is hacky sack. So I don't know if you've ever played hacky sack, but there's something very like social and low key and like soothing about like playing hacky sack, you know, like, you're just outside, like kicking around this little ball, and like there's no score, like you know that gets not there's not stress. You just like keep it up, and then when it drops, you just pick it up and do it again. You know what I mean? Like it's this very zen, hang out with your friends and do something that's very lightly physical, usually in an outdoor space. And I think that we could all use a lot of that type of stuff right now. Um, so I'll go with hacky sack. Hacky sack's underrated. I like that, you know, it can kind of, you know, kind of be an allegory for life. You know, you keep going, you fall and you keep, you get back up and do it again. I like that. That's right. Um, what did you, or when did you feel like an adult for the first time? Oh, um, probably sometime in graduate school, which means yeah. I was probably mid twenties, like mid to mid to later twenties. Uh, you know, something about, something about managing your own finances and having to work a lot all the time, which you, if you go to graduate school, you're definitely working all the time. It's not like, you know, working for a paycheck necessarily, but it's work, you know? 
So something about that whole work all the time and manage your finances is the, are the things that we sort of like associate with adulthood, I guess. Uh-huh. Like, how sad is that? That like, that's the metric of an adult. You work all the time. <laughs> terrible, you know, like, but I think that at least for me, you know, like that was, that was the type of things that like made me feel like an adult, even though I don't think that's what qualifies an adult. Um, if I were giving advice to someone about when you should feel like an adult is it should be when you have enough mo- like emotional maturity yeah be like maintaining healthy relationships and you know interacting in the world in a positive way instead of being like you know someone who demands attention and who demands like concessions in all their relationships i think that the mark of an adult is an emotional maturity not in work but for better that's when i felt like an adult yeah no i I 100 percent agree with you on that um what was the hardest class that you would consider the hardest class in your total academic career? Uh, that's definitely going to be a course called Real Analysis, oh. which I took my first semester in graduate school uh, at LSU. And man, that class beat me up. Like I was in study groups and I am not exaggerating when I say I saw the sun come up multiple times trying to homework in that class like working all night like case in point I remember in 2008 was that I fall of 2008 is when I started graduate um my graduate work that was an election year the year that Obama got elected Uh and I remember on election night the election results were coming in and we were doing real analysis homework actually with Dr. Hall my friend I mentioned earlier um and I saw the sun come up that night doing homework for real analysis on election night. Like, man, That's crazy, brutal, brutal, brutal. Do you miss it at all? No, no. <laughs> if I, like if I never, no, not, no, not a little bit, not even a little bit. No. I'm interacting with my friends, you know, and like the shared bonding experience that is sort of like, you know, that's like a hazing thing, right? Like, yeah. The, because it forces people to make strong bonds and that course felt a lot like hazing. So <laughs> I don't, I don't miss the course, but I do miss the sort of late nights hanging out with my buddies doing wow. the whole part. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Um, what is something you'd like to, you just love to do the old, the old fashioned way kind of thing. Oh, the old fashioned way. Um, I don't know if this counts, but I guess I'll say scratch cooking. Okay. So like, not buying a lot of like prepackaged types of materials, but I really enjoy cooking. You know, I know a lot of people view it as a chore, but like, it's very soothing to me, like to create good, you know, meals are delicious and like I, you know, made from the ground up, like as a Southerner, for example, like scratch biscuits pretty regularly. Oh. And like, they're great. You know, they're not, they're way better than what my grandmother would call want biscuits, like the kind of, <laughs> And that you like beat against the edge of the counter to make the can yeah. pop up. Um, yeah, so like I would say scratch cooking, I guess, is what I like to do the old fashioned way. I like that, you know, it's pretty, it must be a pretty handy skill when you know, wanna. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Both for, both for your, your money, your health, you know, yeah. as a hobby, like this, everyone should know how to cook a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm a big fan of cooking. For sure. Um, how do you relax after a hard day of work? After a hard day of work, um, I guess I would unwind in a couple ways. I like to read science fiction and fantasy. So like reading, I think helps sort of like soothe myself or like just chatting with my wife, you know, like have a beer or a cup of tea and like chat it out, like bring it down a notch, you know, yeah. um, or, you know, like also vegging out, like watching a, watching a show, playing a video game, like any of those types of things, like was sort of like, you know, let you sort of have some some little downtime disconnect to sort of unwind from the rigors of the day. Oh yeah, and you know, I think that's been like an important topic of conversation lately. You gotta remember like you, you need breaks kind of thing, you know? Yeah, you gotta make time for you. You know, everyone wants your time, but you gotta make time for you too. Yeah, exactly. Well, we've reached the end of the questions list. You know, it was amazing. We're uh, real grateful to have you on. This is, this is awesome. Um, but my, yeah, final, thanks for having me. my final question to you is, uh, if you could nominate anyone to be on uh, El Cafecito, who a uh, student, uh, other faculty here at ASU, who can you think? Who would you like to nominate? Well, so I don't know if Dennis Hall, my buddy, has been on, 
we actually have. I would, re- I would recommend him, but if he's already been on, then I would recommend Christina Van Anderson. Okay. All right. Christina Christina Van Anderson um, used to work in the ESL department, uh-huh. uh, teaching English as a second language. Then she used to work in communications and marketing, uh-huh. uh, the communication and marketing department. And then very recently, she's the new instructional designer for the uh, College of Arts and Humanities. Nice. So she's been, she's bounced around a bit um, at ASU, but has been here and sort of seen a lot of aspects of Angelo State. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's a friend of mine, and I think she's an interesting person. So I think she'd be good on, on this show. Awesome. We're going to have to give her a shout out and let her know you nominated her then. Do it. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being on with us today. Um, Thank you, everyone, for tuning into this edition of El Cafecito. We'll see you next time. Bye.